Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the Conrads to come forward and help us light our second candle. This week, we light one candle for peace. Because the world is broken and the wait is long, but we refuse to be frozen by fear. Peace comes in fits and starts, a deep breath, a courageous truth, a humble heart. Prepare the way, she whispers, for the Lord comes to make the broken hole. So, so we, we light, light one, one candle, candle because, because it, it takes only takes only one, one Christ, Christ with us. us. May God be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book, reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall, his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. 
The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy." As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. 
And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord.
be seated. Well, I've been a little out of pocket for the last month or so. I spent almost two weeks in Italy, and then I came back and got COVID, so I was tucked away in my house. And then I was free for a couple of days, and then I got COVID again. So I have finally emerged, and it seems that I have emerged into the retail season of Christmas. And as I am finally out running errands again and shopping, I feel like I am bombarded with all the words of the things I am supposed to feel. Faith, wonder, rejoicing, praise. Even our own season of Advent gives us four words. Hope, joy, peace, and love. We are given all of the ways that we are supposed to feel in Advent as we head towards Christmas. And as I looked at our appointed readings today, they are filled with these words and these themes. The prophet Isaiah, we hear very familiar words for those of us who are here a lot. A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse. Translate, hope. The wolf shall live with the lamb and a little child shall lead them. Translate, peace. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Translate, wisdom. We hear from Isaiah a world that is full of peace and equity and tranquility, where the wicked will be washed away and the world will be calm. Isaiah wrote these words to the Israelites when they had been conquered by the Assyrians. And they were living in a time of chaos and fear and violence. And the first century Jews, who were also living under Roman oppression, leaned into these words of hope, looking for a time when the world would be peaceful and they would be free again. But as I read these words this week, I thought, do these words give us hope? Do we find hope in these words from Isaiah? Can we even imagine a world that has so much equity and peace that it is a tranquil place? Then we get to Paul's letter to the Romans. And boy, I'll tell you, we got all the words for Paul today. It begins with, what was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and the encouragement of the scriptures, we may have hope. We got hope. He goes on, May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another. Translated, peace. And he finishes strong, this Paul, in this, in this section. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope not once but twice and joy and peace and an extra believing for extra credit. Paul claims that all scripture was written for our hope. But how many of us go back to scripture to find hope? And when you read it, when you really read scripture, it's kind of brutal. Some really awful things that happen. Even John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, who came to proclaim the Messiah, dies with his head on a platter. Hope. Then we get to this Gospel reading, speaking of John the Baptist, he wanders out of the wilderness in camel's hair, sticky from the honey and the locusts that he's been eating. He's meant to look like Elijah, the prophet that the people are waiting for. 
And he comes out of the wilderness crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, proclaiming that the kingdom of God is near. A scene that is designed to conjure hope for the kingdom of God. But I have to tell you guys, I'm not, I'm not really feeling it this Advent. I'm not, I'm not really feeling the hope, or the peace, or the joy. Maybe a little bit of love in there, but even that's kind of sketchy right now. I look around the world, and it feels like a chaotic, violent. Place. Protests in Iran are being met with terrible, terrible violence. A war in Ukraine, and it's not even really a war, it's just brutality against innocent people who are fleeing their homes. There have been 600 mass shootings in the United States this year. I am afraid to read the news for fear that I will learn of more people who have been gunned down just because they are living their lives. I learned this morning in the news that in Ohio last night, armed militiamen arrived at a theater where there was supposed to be a drag show. And at the same time in North Carolina, a group of people fired weapons at power plants or power utility stations and took down the power in an entire county so that a drag show could not be performed at a theater. The political rhetoric, rhetoric and lies are leading to real violence and real dangers in our cities and our homes. I am not feeling the great anticipatory joy of Advent. I am scared and I am sad and I am angry. Then we read the rest of the gospel passage. Matthew says, when John saw the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of the repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. first glance, it doesn't seem like John is really terribly hopeful either with his rant about vipers and axes and unquenchable fire. But I noticed something in this reading this week that I have not noticed before. It's always dangerous when a preacher does that, but I did. I noticed a little glimmer of hope, which turned into a lot of hope. You see, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to John, John does not turn them away. John does not look at them and say, you are beyond repair. You're already in line for the unquenchable fire. You might as well just go home now. John looks at the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and yes, he's kind of nasty. He calls them vipers. But then he asks them a question. Who told you to come here? 
John acknowledges that someone told them to come and that they did. That they heard the warning and they came. And then John says something really interesting. John says, bear the fruit of repentance. Bear the fruit of repentance. John offers them an opportunity to repent. He calls them vipers, but then acknowledges that they can turn back to God and that God will forgive them, that they can still bear the fruit of repentance. And there's the hope. The hope is that no matter what we do, there is always room for redemption. God will always forgive us. But wait, there's more. Because John goes on to say, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John, John can help you repent. John can help you turn back to God. But Jesus... The big guy is coming, and he's even more powerful. And he can fill you with the Holy Spirit, and he can baptize you with fire. He can make you whole again. With Jesus, you will have new and unending life. You will be whole again. But wait. There's more. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear the threshing floor and he will gather his wheat into the granary. The chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. You see, some people are the oppressors who need to repent that some people are the oppressed who are waiting for justice. And Jesus comes to bring that justice. Jesus comes to clear the wicked away and to set the enslaved free, to bring the equity and the peace that both Paul and Isaiah talk about. There is hope because there is justice, there is hope, because there is opportunity for freedom and for life that is not full of chaos and violence and pain. The world we live in is full of chaos and violence and pain. That's why we read about it in Scripture. Because people told the stories of their lives which are really the stories of our lives. Sometimes we are the oppressors who need forgiveness. Sometimes we are the oppressed who need judgment. In this season of Advent, maybe we stop and take a moment to consider that maybe Paul was right. The scriptures are written so that we will have hope. Because scripture is a story about a God who loves us. Scripture is a story about a God who forgives us. Scripture is a story about a God who is always seeking to be in relationship with us. Scripture is a story about what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will continue to do to bring the world to a place of peace and harmony. In Advent, we are reminded that hope, peace, and joy, and love abound in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God 
is near. Amen. Our hearts have been broken open to be filled with God's grace. Let us offer prayers on behalf of one another and all creation. We offer our thanksgiving, O God, for your messengers who have prepared the way for our salvation. Stir up your power, O God and with great might come among the leaders of our nation and all in authority. I'm going to do it now. 
we ask you to defend the needy, rescue the poor, and bring... Sorry, we're people. having a technical hiccup. Um, David, we can't hear you in the church, so I'm going to read the prayers of the people instead, but we do see you. Thank you for trying. Our hearts have been broken open to be filled with God's grace. Let us offer prayers on behalf of one another and all creation. We offer our thanksgiving, O God, for your messengers who have prepared the way for our salvation. Stir up your power, O God, and with great might come among the leaders of our nation and all in authority. We ask you to defend the needy, rescue the poor, and bring freedom to those imprisoned. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. We give you thanks, O God, for the whole creation. Things that were hidden are being revealed, and all things are being made new. We pray for those who have died and those who grieve. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Clements, Berkeley, and St. Ambrose, Foster City. We pray in thanksgiving for our parish school, Ventana. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and those in any trouble, especially Gloria Wing, Jackie, Jean, Rick, Azure, Naya, Seraphine, Barbara, Jen Berry, Dick Quigley, Ian, Glenn Bowman, Beverly, Bob Geary, Sue Boleyn, Julie Arnheim, Henrietta C., Judy Hill and family, Nancy Wild, Tom Jenks, Larry Van Note, Bo Martindale, Mark Wild, John Boleyn, and Hal. We pray for the people of Ukraine for all whose lives continue to be disrupted by the pandemic, for the health and safety of girls and women across the country, and for the families and victims of mass shootings. We pray for those who have entered eternal life and those who mourn them, especially Chuck Humphrey, Jamie Arego, and Joe Twan. We give thanks for answered prayers. I invite your own prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either spoken aloud or in the silence of your heart. Thanks for the rain. God, our hope and salvation, whose mercy is like a refining fire, by the loving kindness of Jesus, heal us and those for whom we pray that being renewed by you, we may witness your wholeness to our broken world. Through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins that we may receive God's grace. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. May the peace of God be always with you. Oh, peace to everyone on Zoom. Welcome. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace be with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you, Mona. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Peace be with John and David. Peace. Welcome. Peace. Peace. David. We're here. Peace, Randy. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's lovely to be spending this Advent 2 with you. Um, just a few quick announcements. Uh, next Sunday is a very special Sunday for Christ Church. Um, Eric, do you want to tell us a little bit about this? Uh, Carol, we're going to have Eric come to the lectern if you want to pull up his audio and video. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Next Sunday at our 1015 service, we will be holding our annual service of lessons and carols modeled on the beautiful service uh, made famous by the choir of King's College, Cambridge. So this is an opportunity, this is a beautiful service full of readings that narrate the arc of salvation history, accompanied by uh, carols sung both by the congregation and the choir and some really beautiful music. So that will be next Sunday at the 1015 service. There is no Eucharist as part of the Lessons and Carol service. So if that is important to you, we invite you to attend the eight o'clock service, which will be a regular Advent three liturgy with Eucharist. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, next week, we'll continue our series. We just have two more weeks in it, exploring the stories of the women who are named in Jesus' genealogy in the Gospel of Matthew. We've talked about Tamar and Rahab. This morning, we explored Ruth. Next week, will be Bathsheba. And then our final week will be Mary, of course. Um, it's been a really awesome series. I think everyone who's come has gotten a lot out of it. Um, so even if you haven't come to any of the weeks or you've missed some, if you'd like to join us, please do. It's also available for those of you online. If you'd like to come to the forum um, using the link available in the newsletter, you're very welcome to. Um, so I commend that to everyone. This coming Wednesday, we'll be doing um, some tree trimming and ornament making for our youngest members. Um, we did an Advent wreath event a few weeks ago, and we're going to do a family-friendly Christmas one this coming Wednesday. So if you have young kids or if you are a young kid at heart and you would really enjoy that, um, please join us. It'll be a lot of fun. And last but not least, we have information about all of our holiday services um, coming up. So we'll do a 4 o'clock a very family-friendly Christmas Eve service, including a pageant. So if you um, would like to take part in a pageant, if somebody in your family would like to take part in that, please let me know. Julie and I are working together to plan that. Um, we'll probably script it slightly differently this year, so depending on who wants to take part, we'll make it work. Um, our 9 o'clock service will be preceded, as is our custom, by a concert at 8.30. Um, so everyone's welcome to come to that, and then we'll have a candlelit Eve, Christmas Eve service. Christmas Day is a Sunday this year. Normally we don't have a Christmas Day service, but we are planning one at 1015. Our current plan is to actually do it at the rectory as a very informal, homey, lovely gathering for those who um, maybe don't have family to be with on Christmas Day or just feel like going to church would be really welcome. If you could let me know if you'd like to come to that, that'll help us with just planning a little bit around numbers and how we make the space work. So information about all of that is in your bulletin and also in the newsletter. I believe that is all. Walk in love is, oh, Armand. Oh. <laughs> For those of you on Zoom, somebody dropped something and it has now been recovered. <laughs> Very important. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of you, O God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, Joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming. 
when with the word made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Holy food for holy people. This is God's table, and all are welcome here. We'll have the common cup available in the um, playground area, and we'll have the small cups available across the altar rails. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those around us. So be swift to love, make haste to do kindness, shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia.